Nowadays, we uh, frequently listen that remove the blockages in the heart. So what it is? Uh, it's not very difficult, not very easy also. But we do it not a lot of time also taken, half an hour, one hour like that. So the thing we do is an angiography to see where are the blockages and if those are focal blockages and amenable to angioplasty, we take the patient for angioplasty and remove the blockages. But we cardiologist, interventionist, we do the we remove the blockages here. First we do balloon angioplasty, by that we dilate the fixed blockage and then we put a stent so that there is no residual luminal narrowing and it becomes 100 out of 100 in majority of the patient. We after before ballooning also sometimes we see how is the blockage, how tight is the blockage, what is the size of the artery, how much is the blockage, how much is the lumen area so that we can uh, make the size of the stent according to the IVAS or OCT finding. So that's very important. And also we ascertain the amount of blockage and also the type of blockage. Suppose there is some calcium in the blockage. So normal balloon angioplasty won't help the patient. We have to use atherectomy procedure like rotablation or orbital atherectomy or IVL nowadays or even laser. Sometimes if the patient has a very high bleeding tendency, Suppose he has a bleeding diathesis or the patient because of some ailment like hepatic ailment or some other ailment bleeding diathesis the patient has a tendency of bleeding or he has atrial fibrillation for which he has been taking anticoagulants which increases the bleeding tendency of the blood. In those patients sometimes we do not give the stent and we are satisfied by balloon dilatation and nowadays we have drug eluting balloon and we dilate with the drug eluting balloon and then do an IVAS sometimes and see how is the luminal area, how is the dilatation, if there is any residual blockage, if there is any collapse of the dilated segment, etc, etc, etc. How is the calcium load over there? And finally, we take the decision by IVAS if possible or angiographically and if angiographically there is no dissection, there is TIMI3 flow means good flow through the arteries, we are satisfied with that and we continue with that and we follow up with medical treatment with statins, with aspirin, clopidogrel, oblique ticagrel or oblique presugrel and we follow up the patient. So the treatment is very versatile. Sometimes, last but not the least, we again are coming back to the laser technology. By laser, we treat the in-stent restenosis, suppose there was some stenting and that has become some blockages now and we treat the in-stent restenosis by this laser technology and also laser technology vaporizes the blockage sometimes and you are seeing in the media, social media, there is a lot of hue and cry regarding <coughs> laser uh, operation and this laser is done by us interventionists, the cardiologist and the outcome seems to be good but I just want to remind our listeners, our viewers that laser technology came before also but then it vanished and now again it has resurfaced and this time with much fun and fair. Let us see what is the outcome, what is the long term outcome of this laser technology. So ladies and gentlemen, we have got several ways like balloon angioplasty, balloon angioplasty followed by stenting, then there was absorbable stent. Now of course it's not available only by an Indian company it is available. And uh, there are other technologies like laser technologies. So interventionist can remove the blockages as the question was by different uh, technologies and the outcome is very, very good with very little residual stenosis. Maximum patient, the 100% of the lumen is opened up and we can see that the struts of the stent is covering is well opposed to the surface. There is no under expansion of the stent and it's working fine.